Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today, uh, we have the privilege of welcoming uh, Ralph Dabbas, who is really a pioneer when it comes to the automotive industry in the Middle East. He is the founder and CEO of W Motors. W Motor is the first manufacturer of high performance cars to be based out of uh, the Middle East. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us, Ralph. Thank you, Farid. Nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. So let's let's get to it straight away. And you, you've had a busy uh, past 12 months or, or more with uh, the listing on the Nasdaq Dubai, as well as opening your first manufacturing facility uh, in the UAE. Uh, tell us more about the process that you went through to do this. Sure. Um, first, thanks for having me on, uh, on this webinar. It's quite uh, exciting to see people on the screen. Um, so yeah, so we had a very busy last year. So the past 12 months was quite extensive for the whole team. Um, as you mentioned, we, uh, we worked very hard with the IFC, with uh, Nasdaq New York and Nasdaq Dubai to create a new product called the private listing. And uh, we became the first ever company in history here to a list on a private level in uh, on Nasdaq Dubai. So it's quite exciting to know that companies can do that, uh, that we are also the pioneers when it comes not only on the automotive side, but also when it comes to the business structure side, uh, which was great. So it was quite uh, quite difficult to do it. Um, but November 18 last year, we finally rang the bell and uh, we became officially a Nasdaq company. Uh, and this opened up the different the next step of the company, which was to break ground on the factory, the first manufacturing facility in the UAE, uh, the R&D center, the technology labs, and to start coming out with technologies and uh, products from the UAE for the first time and export to the world. And this has always been our goal, is to build the industry, not only to build the car. Uh, so today we're quite happy to see that we achieved that uh, in a way where we reached the target. And, um, you know, unfortunately we reached a small of a roadblock with the COVID situation, but uh, we're very optimistic to come back on track by end of this year and hopefully deliver on our promise moving forward. So, so to, to go to your point about COVID-19, which really disrupted uh, most businesses, most industries, your business model is basically the, the, the car manufacturer with uh, the, the supercars that we call them and that you know you're famous for uh, and that we see everywhere. But there's another side of the business that is uh, focused on consulting. So through COVID-19, how were you impacted? How did you adapt? How, how things uh, moved forward? Well, exactly. We have two sides of the business, but also we have two other sides of the business. So in total, we are four divisions within the company. Uh, the supercars and the hypercars, this is not impacted and uh, because our clients are still there. Uh, they're not heavily impacted by the COVID situation. And we don't sell cars on a daily basis, so we, only, we wait for the right moment and we launch our products. When it comes to the consulting, uh, we were heavily impacted because the big companies that we worked with had to shut down. So uh, the suppliers had to shut down, the clients had to slow down their pace. So it is, we took a big hit, uh, very honestly, on that uh, side, but it's a temporary hold that we believe will come back on track uh, moving forward. And we did focus a lot on this because we found out that during this period, people want to limit their work for, uh, workforce. They want to limit their internal developments as well with their costs. So they rely on third-party consultants such as us to take on their projects on the turnkey solution. So we believe there will be a lot of bigger opportunities as well when it comes to that coming from COVID uh, to focus on consulting and to develop and design and engineer products for other companies. However, the third division that we have, this is where we focus a lot on, is the technology side. And we have uh, a lot of technology developments within the company, not related to cars. They can be cars, they can be related in different sectors. And one of them is the hologram that we developed around 10 years ago in the Lycan Hypersport, the first car we made. So we decided to look at the COVID situation, see what are the needs during the last 90 to 120 days. And we realized that there's a lot of scared when it comes to the touchless and people touching elevator keyboards and ATM machines and POS machines. So we went back on the drawing board and we took out this hologram that we had 10 years ago. And within 60 days, we developed in-house completely the first ever touchless keyboards and keypads for elevators, POS, and ATM machine. So today we have the prototype ready. They're running, they're functioning, they're flying in the air, and you can control all the buttons and the keyboards in the air. So this is some of the things that we adapted during the COVID to switch our mindset from the development team, the engineering team, say, okay, stop on the cars now. Let's focus on the daily needs that we need on the healthcare, on the medical, 
how can we support the, the world in what we're doing? And this is where we are today. So, so I, I will go back to this point, but first I want to continue on the car because you were also already having within your consultancy side uh, uh, an EV uh, launch uh, from China and you've been focusing on uh, the electric car also. I think W Motors, you're shifting to launch soon a, a, an electric car. So do you see that the automotive sector is moving very fast still and even in, in, in the target where you are of supercars to this electric cars as well? Yes, yes. We, you know, we had a taste of it around five years ago when we started uh, uh, helping Iconic Motors in China, the startup, EV startup in China. So they're going on a different niche. They're going on a mass production, vans, MPVs, full electric. But we started getting deeply involved in electric EVs and we saw that there is a revolution happening. And this is the automotive revolution where all the brands in general are switching to EV. And these are some legislation that passed, some of the regulation that passed in governments. And some of the big brands that we know today will be full EV in the next uh, seven to eight years. Um, so we had to be ahead of the curve and had to really start developing our own EV supercars. Uh, so we, uh, we did announce last year during the NASDAQ listing that we will be a full EV brand in the next couple of years. And our first EV supercar is still on schedule. It's going to be launched by beginning of next year and be on the market by end of 2021 to be uh, to be sold on the market. So it is an exciting time for the company and for all the automotive world. But when we say EV, it doesn't mean all the EVs are the same. Some EVs are full EVs, some EVs are range extenders, some EVs are, are hybrids, but it is a good start for people to switch to full EV in the next few years. And, and you feel it's more of a demand from the market, even in supercars, or is it a, a, a trend that is within the automotive sector? It's not a trend. I mean, don't forget, when uh, the big brands launched their EVs around 10 years ago, the people weren't ready to accept it. So I think it was a big challenge for people to understand what an EV is. They think it's a toy, they think it's a battery, it doesn't perform well. But today people understand the EVs. And this is thanks to one of the big American brands that, was, that helped the world to understand the culture of EVs. Now it's much easier to launch that. EV cars are definitely much more, when it comes to performance, they're much better in performance because you get the torque right away, you get the performance right away, you don't have the gear lag. So you do get the performance, you don't get the sound, but you get a different thrill. And now that people started driving EVs and riding in EVs, they understand the thrill of being you know, an EV owner. So I think it's not a trend, it's a trend that's here to stay, but it is definitely gonna replace the ICE engines that we see today on the roads um, that are coming out you know, very, very quickly from all the brands. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to notice that in, in the high performance cars, also where the sound and, you know, and the, 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 the feel that we, the next generation may be uh, more prone to go to, to EV. And, and this goes back to what you were saying about tech. And we see today valuations of, let's say, Tesla uh, be much larger, much bigger than all the automotive, other automotive. And partly because it is not considered as uniquely a uh, automotive company, but also a tech company, a software company or whatever. So, I mean, 10 years, 20 years down the line, would you rather be called uh, the uh, the Elon of the Middle East, or would you rather be called uh, uh, the Ford of the Middle East? Which one would you choose today? Listen, much, much before than that, uh, it's not going to be 10 years, it's going to be much faster than this. Uh, definitely all automotive companies are no longer automotive companies. I mean, we do mm -hmm. see the shift that we see in the big groups, in the Volkswagen group, in the, the Mercedes group, even in Ford. They're not, no longer focusing on that. They're all focusing either on autonomous, on future technology, and the future of mobility. Um, automotive companies can, cannot survive. They're going to remain as automotive brands over the next 10 to 20 years. I do, I do believe, and i said that many times, that brands, in my opinion, will disappear in the next 10 years. You will not have car brands. You will have platforms, you will have service providers, you will have technology providers, and they will all provide a service instead of providing you a brand that you, you thrive to drive. And this you can see clearly today. If you look closely on the concept cars coming out and the future cars coming out in the next couple of years, you are losing the identity of the brands bit by bit. When you go inside the cabin, you no longer have the extensive luxury elements. You just have a screen and a steering wheel. So it's more personalized on what the brand can give you and what the car can give you instead of what it looks like. So you're losing that. And definitely we are switching to become a full-fledged tech company in the next uh, five to six years. Uh, our focus in the past 10 years of existence was to focus on consultancy, on development, on automotive. 
our next five years is purely automotive, to be honest, when it comes to the sales and the revenues of the company. But on the back end, we'll be heavily developing the technology side of the autonomous program. So by 2025, 26, we will shift completely from an automotive brand to an autonomous future mobility and technology provider. And if you go to, to the tech and the mobility and the future of mobility, there's also a change when it comes to ownership. I mean, there's, there's a different relationship between ownership when, when I mean, uh, when we were at the age of driving, the first thing we wanted is own a car. This is, this is it. Today, you feel that the new generation is not important, you know, and the services. So, uh, so do you see also the, the way uh, uh, the automotive or the mobility, let's call it this way, changes can shift to a completely uh, leasing rental model rather than a full ownership? And how would it adapt to how you see your business as a high performance automotive or tech company today? It's definitely the trend. I mean, mobility as a service is there. And uh, we see the new generation coming in. They don't focus too much on driving. Uh, I know my son, for as an example, my son is four years old. And I do believe that by the time he's 18, he will not have a driving license. He will not need to drive because the cars will be full, full self driving. So this trend, we have to accept it. Mobility as a service is the future. But it's not only targeted on mass products or, or mass transportation, but it is definitely there for the supercars. If I can have a supercar on demand, I can drive a different supercar or hypercar every day by having a membership program or having a, a leasing program or even having a timeshare program. This is what the future is going to look like. Today, it's very difficult to put it in perspective because you don't have many supercars and hypercars that are full EV. You just have a few hundreds of them uh, in the world. But by the next two to three to four years, we do believe this program will come in place. And we are proud to announce that we are the first to ever launch this program for our next EV supercar which we're focusing 50% of our volume will be on a leasing program and the other 50% will be on a direct sale B2B or B2C. So we are looking at it. We actually had a meeting this morning about this uh, particular uh, point. And it is quite exciting to know that people will have access to high performance vehicles, electric, without having to put in half a million dollars or a million dollars up front, just on a leasing uh, easy program. So, so you're, you're based out of Dubai and today, uh, the, the, I mean, out of the, the UAE just launched the first mission uh, to Mars and there's this focus on technology and focus on, you know, uh, also human resources for the country and everything. How does it help being based in the UAE uh, in the sector where you are uh, to, to develop uh, your, your, your company? It helps us internally for us, uh, to, be, uh, to be fair. Uh, it is a, a place where we see potential, when you see the future, you see the thrive to become the smartest cities in the world. Uh, it's in line with the vision of the company of W Motors to become one of the smartest companies in the region when it comes to future mobility. Uh, so it does help us to be aligned in their vision to grow step by step. And if it wasn't for Dubai and the UAE's vision, we wouldn't be thinking the way we are today of autonomous, self-driving, electric, at all. We will be focusing on a pure automotive uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, however, this sector is still very new in, in the region. Automotive manufacturing, automotive development, it's not very well known. The supply chain is still missing. So it's still a high risk when it comes to government supporting such initiatives. However, we do see now the demand coming in and uh, we are getting support from the governments. But I think until we have the full idea, the full image shown to everybody in the region, then they will kind of start opening up the doors to expand towards different levels. We are hoping that we will be, we are the first, but we are hoping that we're going to have many more companies that will be born from the region that are doing maybe similar products that we are, complementary products that we are, especially that we are hiring university students, we're hiring local people, and we are expecting to hire over 600 people in the next few years purely to develop our local manufacturing and to expand to the world. So it is a big push. It is a big uh, uh, let's say, a tick on the, on, the, on the factors of impact on the economy of the UAE. And uh, we are hoping that the UAE will actually see it as an opportunity to grow towards the next level that they, they're looking for. Going back to, to tech, uh, we, we noticed that it's, I mean, the performance of platforms and platforms that can be based wherever in the world can really deploy quite easily. How difficult is it when now that everything is on, on, on a level, on the same level, to compete and that maybe in the US or in China, the pool of uh, financing might be much larger, much, much easier. How, what is the main key point besides, you know, the infrastructure and the ecosystem not being there? What is the things that you need to be able to 
emulate and to create more within and from this region and be able to compete with others? This is very easy. The infrastructure is actually here. Uh, unlike other countries, you are much more advanced when it comes to infrastructure and connected roads and uh, the 5E and all this thing. So we are ready today to deploy autonomous uh, vehicles and advanced mobility. Um, it's, it's more of a question of, of finan financing and resources that is needed here. Today, like you mentioned quite well, uh, Silicon Valley, Bay Area, Europe, they're ready to deploy the big numbers to make sure that they can be the first to do it. Over here, as it is something new, they want to do it, but they're relying on third-party supply like us and anybody else to do it for them. But they prefer to deploy their money somewhere else where it's more secure for the stability of the country. And we understand that today. However, we believe that once the country comes back to more stability, the next year, hopefully in two years, um, we will see a big push for the future mobility and autonomous driving in the region. But definitely it's a question of deep pockets that are dedicated for technology and R&D and automotive that is missing here in the UAE. So, so speaking of uh, uh, pocket, you are uh, in the process of uh, fundraising today. So I'd like to know what is with the COVID-19 situation, how, how are these efforts impacted? What are you looking to raise and what will be the proceeds used for? I mean, many of the, let's face it, many of the people who joined the webinar that are family officers from uh, Asia and from all over the place want to, uh, and they're passionate about car, want to hear this. So let us know, please. Uh, you know, we, we, since we did the Nasdaq listing, uh, private listing in November, uh, we mandated Guggenheim Partners. So Guggenheim uh, is an international uh, financial advisory, and they were in charge of many mergers with automotive sectors. So we found a very fit, a uh, very good fit with them. Uh, we started the process. Uh, we finalized our audits with Ernest and Young, and we did everything we needed to launch the, uh, the fundraising. And then uh, we were ready by mid-March to go to market. And by mid-March, we were at home locked up with the COVID situation. So it, it, was, it wasn't the right timing for us. So we decided to slow down this process and we launched the, the fundraising by uh, beginning of June. So it was nearly a month and we were on the market and we started targeting strategic players when it comes to the, the region here, the Middle East region, GCC, some investors in Asia and US, uh, North America. Uh, so we didn't go on a viral campaign. We went very targeted. So not many people know about that. Uh, so we're raising around $50 million at this stage, which is needed for the growth stage of the, the company. And it's divided into different KPIs and deliverables that W Motors is putting in place under a schedule. Um, but we do believe that it's, the COVID didn't impact much the situation of the fundraising. It impacted, let's say, the response time. It impacted the way we're communicating, the way we're doing the meetings but um, which is definitely, uh, you know, affecting us because, you know, we like to be showing you the car, take a test drive, come to our showroom, we'll sit down on a face-to-face. -face. Today we're doing these presentations on Zoom. Uh, we are seeing a lot of responses, positive responses, which is great. A lot of positive responses from the region as well, which is also great to hear. And a lot of response coming from North America, Silicon Valley, which, as you mentioned, they see the technology side of it and they want to switch it to become a technology-focused company rather than just automotive. So um, hopefully we're looking to close our first ticket by September this year uh, and to launch the second round by beginning of next year to kick off the second round of fundraising by next year. Uh, the use of proceeds, maybe you asked me about that. So we're, we'll be using the $50 million partially to go in the manufacturing facility we have here in uh, Dubai uh, to complete the machinery that we need to make sure that we have an industry 4.0 standard running, fully automated within the facility. Second is to hire and recruit uh, high level staff that are needed today in the level of the company where we are at. So, uh, so we're looking to recruit over 200 people by next year uh, when it comes to the R&D, the, the technology side and the automotive engineering. Uh, third, uh, we're looking to expand our autonomous program to really make sure that we have uh, as promised, around five to six prototypes driving by Expo 2021 next year uh, on the roads. Uh, and fourth is to, to make sure we have uh, enough inventory because we want to target different territories today that are not looking necessarily to wait to get their orders, but actually to start deploying our vehicles, deploying our merchandise right away in different territories around the world. So this is in a nutshell how we're spreading, splitting our use of proceeds and how much we're raising. Uh, I mean, just to, to conclude, I, I wanted to, to, look, to focus a little bit more on the uh, R&D and the tech side. You, you mentioned the hologram uh, that you looked into due to the COVID-19 situation. Are there other uh, applications of your research uh, that might be uh, suitable, uh, whether health or other 
to this situation if it lasts a bit longer? Of course, you know, part of our development program, we have a lot of, so the hologram is one of them. The hologram is endless what you can use it. So it can be used either in a simple application or you can control a full system with floating images. So this is something that's one. Second, we're, we're deeply going into wearable technologies now. So wearable technologies, the IoT, of seeing how we can adapt wearing helmets, gloves, shoes, jackets that have connected technologies inside, either to connect you to monitors or the vehicle or the roads or hospitals. It has a lot of benefits that can be adapted to different sectors. Um, then we're going into the V2X and the V2V, uh, which is something that's definitely a must for the future. Uh, maybe not necessarily when it comes to the health, but also to facilitate the communication between the people with each other and the vehicles and the grid. Uh, wireless charging, inductive roads, all these things that are needed moving forward. And this is one where the focus is going to be also with W Motors, uh, with our investment round, to grow the technology arm, to be able to achieve at least 20 to 30 IPs every year coming out from the UAE and growing to the rest of the world. So this is something that's definitely needed. And we're seeing today a big focus due to COVID on many governments and authorities that are supporting these initiatives uh, to help grow the local developments as much as possible. Uh, thank you very much, Raf. We won't be able to, to do some Q&A today because the, I know your, your schedule is, is a bit tight today, but I thank you for uh, joining us and, and taking the time and look forward to the day where we have a European kid or an American kid saying, I want to be the Ralph of the US or the Ralph of Europe. So wishing you all the best and uh, see you soon. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.